Hey everyone, Samantha here and welcome to another video inside the Make Stained Glass Club. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some footage from a stained glass lamp repair I've done in the past. Now you may have seen the dragon repair video. This one takes a completely different approach. So let's get to it. So this lamp had taken a really far fall. It fell from the ceiling to the floor and there were large areas of this that were cracked or broken. And so the very first task when handling a repair of this nature is obviously to map out exactly where the broken pieces are and which ones you need to replace. So using some permanent markers, I indicated with X's all along the glass, which ones were broken. And because there were such large areas that were damaged, I ended up using some green masking tape or painter's tape rather to really outline those areas that needed to be fixed. So all those sections above the green areas of tape, those are the sections I need to remove the glass and replace pieces. So now with the broken areas all mapped out, the very first task I needed to do was remove the wire that's around the edge of the lamp. Now in case you aren't aware, all well-made lamps should have a very heavy gauged wire that's embedded in the solder around the largest opening, be it the part facing up or facing down, on any given lamp to give it some structural support. In order to start removing that wire that's around the edge, I needed to melt one small section of the solder to allow an area just large enough for a piece of paper to slip through. Now you saw me fold a piece of paper over and that's so that it makes it just a little bit stiffer. So the object here is to warm one small area and then as the solder is still molten to quickly move that piece of paper in between so that it becomes a separator. Now you do need to be careful and pay attention to your piece of paper. You will see it smoke every now and then. It's obviously uh, something that doesn't like the heat and could easily catch fire. So you do need to be very careful of what you're doing. However, I have since learned that you can also do the same thing with a piece of a pop can. By using the aluminum, the solder won't stick to it and it's obviously a little bit more heat resistant and so you won't have the same concerns. So you'll see me every so often moving the soldering iron from the bottom over to the top and that's strictly to be able to get enough heat in the one area where I'm working. So by adding that little bit of heat I can liquefy the solder in that section and then slip the paper in between. And you can see here since I started working on this I have been able to remove probably about five inches of solder from along the edge. It is a very slow process and it's just one unfortunately that you really have to take your time in order to be able to remove that wire in one piece and not damage anything else underneath it. So after the ring of wire is off then it's to start disassembling the lamp to get those broken pieces out. So instead of breaking the pieces to remove them, because some of these were still intact, many of them were broken, but there were still some that I could use. So I was doing my best to remove everything so that I wouldn't end up damaging anything else that was below it. Now something else to mention is this repair was the largest one I'd ever done on a lamp and because so much of it was broken and I actually needed to remove so much glass, I was afraid that I wouldn't get it back into the exact same shape. And this particular style of lamp was interesting to me. It didn't, it doesn't have a vase cap on the top edge of it or bottom edge of it, so it doesn't actually sort of slip onto a post. What this one is, is there's like a wrought iron ring of sorts that goes around the whole wide area and there were three hooks that got soldered onto the lamp itself so that it could suspend uh, from the ceiling this solid ring and then have the lamp shade kind of suspended inside that ring. It was a very interesting concept but it meant that the shape of the lamp, which when it arrived was not round because of the impact when it hit the floor, it needed to be fit so that it would hang 
evenly inside this ring that was perfectly circular. So I did have to build a mold to be able to put the lamp back together after, but the disassembly of the whole thing was such a lengthy process just because you have to go slowly. So the whole lamp, all of the sections that needed to be replaced were removed using the method of slipping the paper in between all of the pieces and carefully pulling them out. Now you can see in this footage here that I ended up removing a lot of pieces along the edges. There were in most places two layers that were removed, but there was actually one section where I created a hole in the lamp because there were some pieces still intact, but there were a couple below that were broken. So they were removed on their own and you can see them here, that little hole in there. Those were ones that I removed again using that paper technique. So here is the lamp once it was all finished and I'm proud to say that I did make the lamp round again so that it would hang properly inside its form. And it was a really challenging piece to do. As I say, it's the biggest repair to a lamp that I had to do and this one was really, really uh, finicky in the sense that it had to be perfectly round to hang in that iron ring. Now every repair that you do is going to be different and have specific needs based on that project and the damage that was done to it. But this is one more trick that you can add to your collection of things that you can use as ways to help you in different situations. Thanks for watching.